All right, music fans, welcome. The Harmless One returns, talking about real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. All right, so another strange occurrence occurs, and yours truly is on it. I know nothing about a band called 808 State. No idea who they are, uh, but I looked into it a little bit and uh, pretty much found what the article says about 808 State. Uh, here's the story, though. 808 State keyboard player and bassist Andrew Barker has died aged 53. Andrew Barker. Um, and it was confirmed via their social media channels and their immediate family um, issued a statement. And here it is. It reads, after a happy life, Andrew Barker experienced a short period of illness a short period of illness. After a happy life, Andrew Barker experienced a short period of illness and passed away in his home, uh, his hometown of Manchester yesterday. His family and friends ask that people respect their privacy at this time, but remember him for the joy he brought through his personality and music. You'll be sadly missed. Okay. 808 State were formed in Manchester in uh, 1987, taking their name from Roland's iconic 808 drum machine. Originally a trio comprising Graham Massey, Martin Price, and Gerald Simpson, who soon left to pursue solo projects as a guy called Gerald, the band went through various lineup changes, the most recent being just Massey and Barker. <laughs> Their bio is longer than the statement from the family. And um, I don't know very much about this band. And I'm sure people here in uh, the US don't know much about this electronic band, but I'm sure they harnessed all of that 80s energy back in 1987. And maybe they became fairly popular in the underground circuit, don't know. but. The statement of after a happy life, Andrew Barker experienced a short period of illness. It's like, hey, I was driving down the road in my car and I noticed that, you know, I had this little glitch, you know, maybe the the engine wasn't firing properly or probably more appropriate. Maybe I needed a tune up. Right. And then all of a sudden the engine of the car falls out and I go and see the dealer and I say, you know, after a happy few years with this car, um, it's pretty much done. It just, you know, kicked the bucket. And uh, now I'm going to just uh, have you guys uh, put it in the junkyard. And they'd be like, what? I mean, I, I, you know, and it would be only, you know, 53 for a person. Yeah. Is that an old car? Is that a car that's like, what, 10 or 15 years old being 53? Maybe. But again, um, I'm making these really bad analogies to make a point that they don't seem all that concerned uh, with details. And I understand the privacy angle. Had this discussion during the whole UB40 thing, which happened, what, a couple of days ago. And here we are. And here it is again. And people are sending me these stories. Some of the stories, by the way, I don't cover. There are some of them were like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to cover that one. This one to me, because of the way the family addressed it, right? And I get the privacy angle, but it's very capricious. It's very dismissive. Like, oh, uh, everybody has a short illness. And then typically people just die from the short illness at age 53. And the other day, you know, I told you about the natural causes with Tawny Katane, all of those natural causes like the stuff that was in her system and um, the fact that she had a real heavy duty heart condition and they ruled it natural causes, right? They said it in the article. I read it like multiple times. See, you know, what's interesting. Most people, and I'm not saying this to make anyone feel bad, but most people don't pay attention. In other words, you'll see images flashing on the screen. You'll see words connected with those images It'll be a news report. It'll be a commercial. It'll be something, right? And you just kind of pay attention to it. And you're not really that worried about the details. But to be a journalist 
really in today's world, you have to read what they are saying and then try to interpret what they're trying to say. And few people do that because they're busy. They typically think, you know, or they're lazy. That's the other one. They're apathetic. They don't really care. But a lot of people will give other people the benefit of the doubt. They're, they're not going to do any heavy duty research on their own or even a very light cursory view of something where I just did that. And I'm thinking to myself, that's kind of a dismissive paragraph. He had a happy life. Okay, that's good. 53 years. I'd be kind of bummed out. I mean, because I'm older than 53 right now. So I'm thinking to myself, wow. And they're just kind of like, yeah, that's it. Thanks, Andrew Barker. And, you know, nothing to see here. Just move along. And privacy, of course, is going to be used to kind of obscure. And I'm not saying privacy is bad. Privacy has always been a thing. You don't want to find out that your rock star died from an overdose, right? You don't want to find that out. And then to tell the general public, you know who's most worried about that? The estate. Because if, say, and I'm sure Andrew Barker isn't in this category, but if it's a major artist who has a huge catalog and that catalog will be affected, of course, it didn't really affect the doors and Jim Morrison, I'm kind of thinking as I go here. But in some circumstances, when you find out why someone died or how they died or what they were doing when they died, then that tends to like sour people on, you know, purchasing music posthumously going forward. They're kind of like, well, that guy was kind of an idiot or a jerk. And I don't want to, you know, pay money to invest in music when this guy was a really bad example for humanity. Uh, and I think that's part of the issue here is that, you know, if this guy was doing something, right, and we'll just leave the thing off the table. But if he did do the thing, and the, the main concern here is that, oh, this didn't work out so well. So let's not tell anybody about this because you're going to keep hearing this is rare. Okay. But if I mean, that's that's if we take if we have the thing on the table, if we take the thing off the table, then it's just about their image moving forward and how they're going to be remembered. And they address that in the statement that he lived a happy life and he would like to be remembered as a joyful person. And those are all great things. I'm not knocking this. Some will say and, and they might be right that I'm overanalyzing this issue. But, you know, I had UB40 the other day, right, a couple of days ago, and I had stuff prior to that, Tawny Katain, which continues because they keep trying to tell you what natural causes are. And I'm going, those aren't natural. Those aren't natural causes. You know, but injecting yourself with something, too, is not a natural cause. So it's something else. And do they want you to know? Of course not, because this will blow up the entire narrative about safety and efficacy and all those things. And I don't know. I, I See, here's where I stand, right? If I'm a human being and something happens to me that's negative, this is kind of goes to where Eric Clapton went. I did something, something negative happened. I will tell you about what happened. I'm not going to cover it up for the so-called greater good because the greater good you're going to find out is the greater bad. It's the greater evil at the end of it all. But I'm going to tell you about my experience, whether that's at Jiffy Lube or at, um, you know, Wendy's or if it's at the barbershop or wherever it is, you're going to tell your experiences to people. And if it's, you know, hey, I did this thing and then all this stuff happened to me. Right. And then people are mad. It's like, shut up. So don't don't say that and, and then go and do the thing. And here's the guy who had already done it. He had done the thing and people are telling him, you know, he should just shut up and do the thing. <laughs> it's like and this is what I'm talking about when people don't observe details because you can tell them something a hundred times. And, and this is why politicians, for instance, who have slogans. Right. And they'll say the slogan over and over and over again because people are really dense 
or people are busy or people are just consumed with themselves, right? And you would think the era of me, right? Some people would say me too, but I'm, this is the era of me. It's all about me. And so this might affect me. You would think people would be like, okay, you know, but they're giving away their liberty. They're just like, I trust the state, not 808 state, the big state, you know, the state that's controlling everything. Whether you believe in globalism or you don't, whether you believe that it's just a corrupt federal government here in the United States or the government of the UK or these individual countries that are all making the same decisions at the same time, exactly the same way. I mean, what's what's build back better? Can someone tell me what that is? Because that's interesting because that didn't exist. But now people in the UK say it, people here in the States say it, people around the world have adopted this expression, this phrase out of nowhere, build back better. What is that? And, and why are we doing that? And nobody seems to care. Sounds like a great slogan to me. Sounds good. You know, ready to roll up my sleeve and join the build back better group here. So we can have this great dystopian, I mean, utopian future for everyone. Now, I know that's a lot to get out of um, some person who you've probably never heard of from a band that you've probably never heard of, but it's all tied together. And maybe this is just a short illness followed by a sudden death. That just seems weird to me. And the more I do these videos, the more things are getting weirder and weirder. So anyway, I want to thank everybody who um, supports this channel, uh, who does so via Patreon and also just subscribing and watching the videos and putting them on repeat play, endless loop, whatever you have to do. Uh, I use every tool in the toolbox, folks. And again, if you'd like to support the channel, head on over to Patreon. A dollar a month is all I ask. But if you want to do five bucks, three bucks, two bucks, Whatever you can afford, that would be great. We're in the era of uncertainty, and we're all going to have to kind of support the people uh, who we like, because uh, it's not like I'm going to get big uh, corporate sponsorship here at my channel. Uh, that would be crazy, right, if that actually happened, because I am not putting out the corporate narrative right now. So thanks again, and I will talk later.